As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, shallow people believe in luck and in circumstance. Strong people believe in cause and effect. That's the simplest change that you could make in your life, to choose to believe that everything is a result of choices that you make. And it is a choice. You can choose to believe in luck. You can choose to believe that you don't have control, that you don't have agency, that the world is happening to you. Or you can choose to recognize that cause and effect exists, that if you want to get better at something, you need to put in the work, that if you want to get stronger, you need to lift heavier weights, that you can either ask for stronger shoulders to carry a bigger load, or you can ask for a lighter load. The choice is yours, but at the end of the day, if you want those strong shoulders, they're yours to build. You've got to make those choices. You've got to understand the cause and effect. You've got to understand that your life right now is the exact reflection of your choices, your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, the hateful, the painful, the joyful, the beautiful, everything in your life is a reflection of you. It's a reflection of the things you've decided to do. It's a reflection of the things you've decided not to do. It's the story you tell yourself about yourself, what you believe is capable. All of those things, they're the choices that you're making every day and at any time you can choose to make a different choice. And as Bruce Lee said, if you always put limits on everything you do, physical or anything else, it will spread into your work and into your life. There are no limits. There are only plateaus and you must not stay there. You must go beyond them. Even in the statement, you can see him making the choice about what to believe by saying that there are no limits, by taking something that other people perceive as a limit, as something that's stopping him and saying, that's not, it's a plateau, it's something that I can push through. And you see what he holds himself accountable to. It's not okay to stay at a plateau. It's okay to have one, everybody has them, they happen. It's a natural part of the course of getting better, but it is not okay to stay there. And that is a choice, that's not something anyone can hand you. It's something you have to believe to the core of your soul that it is not okay to stay in a plateau, and it's that that's gonna push you through. It's that that's gonna make you get up and keep going. But first, you have to recognize that life is cause and effect. You have to recognize that that choice is a knock-on effect. You have to recognize that him merely saying those words out loud have a cause and effect. They change the course of his life, the expectations that other people have of him, expectations that he has of himself. And because he understands that he can control the outside world by first controlling what's inside, by changing his belief system to match what he wants to accomplish, he's then able to accomplish. What he did in his life had nothing to do with luck. It had everything to do with the demands that he made on himself. It had to do with when he got in a motorcycle accident and people told him he would never walk again. Not only did he walk again, all of the major accomplishments that we think about of being that man, they all came after. They came after he was told he was never gonna walk. It came after he was told that he was never going to be able to do martial arts. But he did it. He did the grueling work of getting better. He understood cause and effect. He understood that if he chose to believe that he could never do it, that he'd never be able to do it. But that if he chose to believe that by working out, he could get stronger and get better and get back to it, that he could. And that's what he did. So now ask yourself, is your life dictated by luck or cause and effect? Are you in control or is it somebody else? Is someone else in control or is it you? And if it's you, go build the life that you want because there's nothing stopping you but you. Everyone takes the limits of their own vision for the limits of the world. Arthur Schopenhauer. There is all around you right now the reflections of your world belief. They're so ever present that you don't even see them. All the assumption that you've made about the world, the things that are possible, what you're capable of, who you are, the very definition of what it means to be alive, all of it is completely invisible. And you're mistaking what you have for what could be. And once you break free of that, once you understand that right now you're a moment in time and that you have latent potential and that latent potential can be expressed in the form of skills, that you can get good at things, that you can develop yourself in any direction, that brain plasticity alone 
is one of the greatest weapons that you're not using, but you have to move beyond what you can perceive today. You have to begin to look beyond that and see that which doesn't yet exist. And you have to remember that many of the things that are holding you down are rules that you don't even realize are rules. And as General Douglas MacArthur said, you're remembered for the rules you break. And right now, you're following rules that you don't even realize exist. And some of those rules are simply what is okay to dream. But I'm here to tell you, the power is in recognizing that you can do it. The power is in having the arrogance of belief. The power is in understanding that you, yes, you, are going to be capable of something simply because you are willing to believe in yourself. And that's the thing, it's a willingness to believe in yourself. No one's gonna give it to you. Even the people that love you, they're not gonna give you that. They are incapable of giving it to you. People cannot see past their limitations and they take them for truth. People actually believe the things that have stopped them will forever not only stop them, but they will stop other people. How can they hope to give you anything but limitation? So if you know that, if you know that even the people that love you, what they're handing you is limitation with the best of fucking intentions, with all the love in the world, how are you gonna break out of that? How are you gonna break past those rules? How are you gonna fight the anxiety that inevitably comes your way when you think about going against the grain? But my friends, until you can do that, you can never get beyond the bullshit that limits you. If people said gravity is what it is, we never would have reached escape velocity, and yet, as a species, we have been able to hurl a fucking rocket into space, get it outside of gravity, take us to other planets. That is real only because somebody said, I refuse to be held down by the most obvious rule that we have, the one that everybody says is beyond reproach, and that is gravity. But even gravity will break under the weight of a superior will. So recognize, as Epictetus said, if you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. Can you be content to be thought foolish and stupid? Or do you allow yourself to be caged, to be hemmed in by what other people think? And look, I get it. I understand the sting of contempt. I understand how much it sucks when someone you respect doesn't respect you. But you cannot be anything more than their captive if you think about what they think about you. If you let yourself be defined by what other people perceive of as you, then you will forever be limited by what they give you permission to do. And I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I said, when I'm an adult, I will never fucking be told what to do again. I will never be held back by somebody else. I will define myself. I will figure out what I need to do and I will do it. And at the end of the day, that is it. My goals drive my behavior. I am not held back by what other people think about me, no matter how fucking intoxicating it is to be loved. You have to decide what you want more. Do you want to be you or do you want to be someone else's reflection of you? As Mark Twain said, the secret to getting ahead is getting started. And that's something I want all of you guys to really embody and really think about and really put at the core of your existence. That step number one to accomplishing whatever it is that you want to do is actually getting started. And I understand, I know the thing that holds you back. I know the thing that is absolutely paralyzing for people is you don't think that you have what it takes to go out and be good. And rather than face that difficult, brutal process of growing and getting better and quite frankly facing your inadequacies, it's easier just to sit back. But as John Wooden said, never let what you cannot do interfere with what you can. There is something right now that you're capable of. There is an innate skill inside of you that's your spark. It's that starting point. It's that thing that while you may not be the best in the world at it, it's a flame that you can fan. It's something that you can breathe life into and really begin to get good. But first you have to understand the very nature of progress. And that's as Stephen Covey said, you're not the product of your circumstances but rather a product of your decisions. And it's those decisions that are going to allow you to build that skill set. So don't worry about where you started. Don't worry about what you already have. Remember, it's the decisions that you make. It's going down that road. It is the decision to get started. It's the decision to face possible failure. It's the decision to get up once you failed. And it's the decision of what to learn when you fail. 
Do you learn that you're not good enough? Do you learn that you never should have tried? Or do you learn a lesson from the failure and get up and brush yourself off and remember that at the end of the day, you're going to go as far as you're willing to fight for, and that's it. And if you're willing to fight to go all the way, then you will go that far. You will set a new bar. You will define for people what is possible. You become that beacon of hope. You become that thing that other people look to as the standard. But at the end of the day, it started with you getting started. It started with you showing up. It started with you pushing and trying. So get out there. Don't worry about what you have and what you are. Focus on who you want to become and the price you're willing to pay to get there. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Wherever you are right now listening to this, I want you to burn that into your mind. The most powerful weapon that you're going to have at your disposal isn't a gun, it isn't a sword, it isn't a bomb. The most powerful weapon you will ever have at your disposal if you really want to make change is knowledge. It doesn't mean going to school. It can be school, it can be books, it can be a mentor, it can be somebody else's failure, it can be your own failure. But whatever it is, to always be learning, to be learning something today, knowing that that's an investment. And as Robert Louis Stevenson said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but rather by the seeds you plant. And that's what knowledge is. That's what the learning process is, is you're learning something today that you may not even understand how it's going to be valuable. But one day, that piece of knowledge is gonna to come to your aid one day. That thing that you learned is gonna be something that you're gonna lean on one day. That thing that you've worked your ass off to understand better than anybody else in the world. It's going to help you change the world. But you have to be doing it now. You have to be learning with an obsession. You have to understand that ideas in equal ideas out and that you have to chase that knowledge down, that it is a relentless pursuit and that like you would build an armada, like you would create a stockpile of weapons, you must create a stockpile of knowledge. You must learn and learn and learn and you must hold yourself accountable every day to planting those seeds, to getting better, to learning more, to understanding things more broadly. When you do that, there will be nothing that won't be unlocked to you. That's what I want you guys to understand. It doesn't matter where you are now. It doesn't matter where you started, your circumstances, the money, the people that you know, none of it matters. What matters is how much are you willing to learn? How good are you willing to get? How much knowledge are you willing to soak in? Because that will become your weapon. That will be how you rise up and that will be the thing that will protect you when you need it most. you want to do something incredible tomorrow, learn today. As Michelangelo said, if people knew how hard I worked to achieve my mastery, it wouldn't seem so wonderful after all. And that's the thing about getting great. That's the thing about being an artist of such caliber that you're remembered for hundreds of years after your death. It is back-breaking work. It is a blinding amount of effort. It isn't about natural talent. That myth that some people are born with something that we celebrate so much is just that, a myth. You're born a lump of flesh. You can't hold your own head up. You may have predispositions, but that is a long way from actually crafting your ability until the point where it looks like magic. And that's the beauty of artistry, isn't it? that it's so unbelievable that you're more willing to believe that it was God-given, that they were anointed with it, 
than that they just worked their ass off. But the truth is, every one of the greats, no matter how much natural talent they were born with, they're remembered because they worked. They are remembered because they did so much work. Because in that work is hardship. In that work is difficulty. In that work is unbearable adversity. But it's in that adversity that the magic happens. And as Victor Hugo said, adversity makes men. Prosperity makes monsters. So I know right now you wish you'd been born with some talent. You wish that all those dreams that you had, they were yours for the taking, that you didn't have to put blood, sweat, and tears into it, that somebody would hand you at least something in the beginning, that they would give you some start, some spark. That's where the monster's created. If you really want to get hard, if you really want to get tough, if you want to get great, if you want to be unfucking touchable because no one can bend or break your vision of yourself, then you have to suffer. That's the way of the world. And as Florence Nightingale said, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuse. And that's the secret. At the end of the day, if you know what you want, it's only a question of whether you're willing to pay the price to get there. So ask yourself, are you willing to pay the price? As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. It's never going to make sense. It's never going to be obvious. You're never going to walk out your door and see the obvious way that you want to go. And if you do, it's a trap. If you do go down the path that's already laid for you, it's going to take you to all the destinations that are already known. It's going to take you to all of the places that instinct drove the people before you. But if you want to go somewhere unique, if you want to go somewhere that only you would go, if you want to create something new and really live a life that was meant for you because it's literally crafted by you, you have to take the first steps on faith. And as Rumi said, as you start to walk out on the way, the way appears. So as you're looking at the choices that are before you, where you've got a path that's well trodden, you've got a path that literally is invisible and won't become something until you step on it, you have to understand that that's what this life is meant to be and that the only frustration that you will look back on with tremendous regret is knowing that you did what was easy even though it wasn't you. There's some mechanism inside of us. There's something that wants us to walk a path that's never been walked before. And the thing that makes it so hard is right now inside of you is a desperate desire for that to be easy. But it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. You're going to fail. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall on your face. And thank God. Because as Muhammad Ali said, only a man who knows what it's like to be defeated can reach down to the bottom of his soul and come up with the extra ounce of power it takes to win when the match is even. So what you have to ask yourself is, what do you want? Do you want it to be easy? Do you want the path to be well-worn? Or do you want the path to be yours? Do you want to know that inside of you is something that you can reach into and grab and that will be there at the moment that you most need it? Do you want to know that you're that type of person? Because if you do, you have to be willing to walk the path that doesn't exist. You have to be willing to tread through the brambles. You have to be willing to fall because it is in that process of failure and pain and agony and suffering that you will become. That's the process that will make you you. That's the process that will shape you. It's the suffering that gives you the reserves to draw on when you need them most. So when you ask for safety, when you ask for ease, know that you're saying a prayer for weakness. And when you take the hard way, know that you're forging yourself. When you make those demands, know that you're building a reserve tank that will be there at the moment when you need it. When you walk the path that only you can walk, know that you're living the life that you were meant to live.
And that, my friends, is how you become the you worth becoming. All right, listen and listen well, because no truer words are ever gonna be fucking spoken. You can do anything you want without limitation. Whatever it is that you decide you want to make come true in your life, you can do that. It is gonna take an inhuman amount of work. You're gonna have to be prepared to break yourself in half. You are going to have to learn more than anyone has ever learned. You're gonna have to push yourself harder than anyone has ever asked you to push yourself before. You're gonna go way beyond your breaking point. You're gonna run until you vomit. You're gonna study until you fall asleep. You're going to push and push and push, and then you're gonna push some fucking more. And when you hit the limit, you're gonna push again beyond that. You're gonna force yourself into an adaptation response. And why? Because as Malcolm X said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. So if you don't put the work in today, if you don't do the unending, back-breaking work of developing yourself into something greater, the world is gonna pass you by. The people that are going to own it are gonna be the ones that did that work. And the one promise that I can make you right now is that somebody, somebody out there is outworking you. Somebody right now is doing the things that I'm saying. Somebody right now is doing the work of failing and getting up and getting better and pushing themselves and triggering that glorious adaptation response that makes humans the apex predator. Someone right now, they're putting in that work. And if you don't, the future is gonna belong to them. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. It's not okay to make excuses. It's not gonna slow people down. It's not okay to ask the world to stop so that you can step out front. It's not okay to expect little of yourself and demand great rewards. The only thing that's okay is to be in line with the way that the world really works. And if you want to be great, you've got to become capable of greatness. You've got to develop your skill set. You've got to take what you have now, and if that's crawling, then fucking crawl. But you drag yourself ever forward to a vision of yourself that is so clear and so specific that nothing could knock you off your path because you, my friend, know exactly where you're going. You're willing to pay whatever price it takes to get there. And no matter what anybody says no matter how many fucking hecklers come for you no matter how many people try to throw dirt on you try to stop you try to knock you down no matter how many fucking people come for you at night while you sleep you will rise and you will keep pushing forward and you will get better every day and no matter how many times people chop at you knock you down knock you off the path you will get back on you will crawl till you can walk you will walk till you run and then you will run until you fly and that my friends is the only path forward. So if you want a fucking future that makes you happy, if you want a world that you're excited about, get your ass out there and earn it. As Thomas Edison said, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is to always try one more time. I know there are gonna be a million times in your life where you want to give up, where you absolutely ache with the desire to quit, where nothing sits inside of your gut other than the certainty that you are going to fail, that you are not good enough to push forward. But that is to fundamentally misunderstand the nature of a failure. The nature of a failure is not to tell you who you are. The nature of a failure is to tell you a way that didn't work. It's to inform, it's to educate you, it's to test you. It's to be a gut check, to find out if you believe in yourself enough to push forward even when the world seems to be telling you not to. And as Brian Tracy said, attempt the impossible in order to improve your work. Think about that for a second. Attempt the impossible just to get better, to try the things that you know are going to fail, things that the world is gonna tell you simply cannot be. But even if it violates the laws of physics, if there's something in that attempt that you're going to learn, you owe it to yourself. You have a fucking moral obligation to try. 
Because all of the people that will lie in your wake are the people that didn't try simply because they didn't believe that they could do it. You have to be willing to look at the world. You have to be willing to see things that you yourself think are impossible and try. Because in that you will stretch yourself. You have to be willing to look inward at the state of your current skill set and say, I'm going to play outside of that. I'm not going to play where it's safe. I'm going to play where it hurts. I'm going to play where I feel clumsy. I'm going to play only in the areas that make me feel stupid because in that I know that the way that the brain responds is through adaptation. But I have to stress myself. You can't ever lose sight of that. The only way that the human animal adapts is through stress. You have to be willing to break things in order to build something new. So if you want to push the boundaries, if you want to see just how far you can go, if you want to succeed at the highest level, if you want to play on a global scale, you have got to be willing to try the impossible because right now, the things that you need to do are impossible for you. But they won't remain that way forever. And as Aristotle said, Pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. This doesn't have to be a tale of always being terrified. Everybody, myself included, screaming at you, telling you that you need to go do something great. The part they're leaving out is why the fuck should you care? You should care because it's the greatest joy. You should only listen to this if it's leading you down a path that makes you feel more alive, and that's the point. The point is to get in touch with something that makes you feel great, but not to let yourself starve or be stopped by a fear that you'll fail, by a fear that it can't be done. Have fun, have the guts to enjoy yourself, have the guts to go out and attempt something audacious and terrifying, knowing that all along, if you're doing it right, you're gonna have a good time. So all of this, going balls out, trying to prove something to yourself, trying to do something amazing, never lose sight that it's to build a better life. Never lose sight of the fact that you're doing it to create the person that you want to be. Never lose sight of the fact that it should be fun. As JBS Haldane said, the world shall perish not for a lack of wonders, but for a lack of wonder. Everything around you is incredible if you're willing to look at it that way. Everything around you can be taken for granted if that's your perspective. But it really is about the frame that you choose to put around things. I mean, simply being alive is already insane. The odds are so stacked against you, not only just being a human, but being a human at this moment in time. This moment in time where breakthroughs in technology are happening at, at an unprecedented rate, where breakthroughs in medical science are happening at an unprecedented rate, where our ability to connect with people, to empathize with people all the way around the globe, all of the changes that have happened in technology and telecom and connectivity, health, everything. We're living in the most miraculous time ever but you have to look at it that way. And as Joseph Campbell said, life is a wonderful, wonderful opera, except that it hurts. So the question is, do you see it as the beautiful opera? Or do you just pay attention to the pain? And at the end of the day, you're gonna get what you focus on. They're both true. This is both the most amazing time that's ever happened ever in recorded history. And yet real things that are terrifying are also happening. But where you put your energy, where you put your attention, where you put your focus is going to determine what you see. And that is the most fascinating and the most important thing you have to understand about the way that your mind works. You get what you focus on. If you focus on the things that are bad, they will become real. They will become exaggerated. They will begin to monopolize your thoughts. You'll see them everywhere. It's called the reticular activating system. Your mind is literally designed to pay attention to the things that you notice. Once you notice a certain car, you see it everywhere. Once you notice a certain dog, you see it everywhere. Once you hear a certain name for the first time, suddenly you realize that that name has been all around you this entire time. But now that you're focusing on it, now that you're looking for it, it is everywhere. So whatever you look for, it's gonna be everywhere. If you look for the negative, it'll be there. But if you look for the positive, it will overwhelm you. And as Joseph Campbell said, people say 
What we're all seeking is a meaning for life, but I don't think that's what we're really seeking. I think what we're seeking is the experience of truly being alive. And that's it. That's the juice. Figuring out that thing that makes you come alive. It isn't keeping up with the Joneses. It isn't how much you're getting paid. It isn't anything other than for you. Something very specific. It would be different for everyone, but for you. Find that thing that makes you come alive. Focus on it. Think about it. Put your time and attention there. Shift away from seeing the pain in the opera and instead seeing the wonderment in it all. Seeing the glory that is just everything around you. The opportunities, the fact that you're alive. Once you can see that those basic things that you take for granted, that you can breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, all of that stuff, once you start seeing how miraculous it really is, once you start seeing how we're connected to each other, once you understand that the name of the game isn't wealth, it isn't fame, it isn't ambition or success, it's neurochemistry. It's feeling a certain way. It's finding fulfillment in your life. Once you realize that, you'll understand this is a game of attention and you entirely control what you focus on. So choose very wisely, my friends, because your life will literally become the summation of the things that you look at.